The mountain pine beetle, classified as Dendroctinus ponderosae, has created a huge outbreak in North America. It originated in British Columbia and has since spread to Colorado and the Rocky Mountain National Park. In the beginning of 2013, there were over 264,000 acres of trees inhabited by mountain pine beetles. Due to the recent climate change, pine beetles are able to survive the cold northwestern winters, increasing their population. In small numbers, the beetle aids the forest by clearing old, weak, and dead trees. However, in great numbers, the species poses a big threat to live trees. Since 1990, more than 60 million acres of forest from northern New Mexico to British Columbia have been destroyed by the beetles. Scientists in Wyoming tested the historical evidence of pine beetles in Yellowstone National Park. 25 years before the 1988 fires in order to observe the effect of beetles before these fires. To collect a correct estimation of the population of beetle activity, they used the Markov chain Monte Carlo method. This method uses algorithms for sampling from probability distribution. The probability distribution of beetle activity is formed with a Markov chain, which separates the specific time of the set values which a process can take. They specifically examine three variables, drought, aspect, and sustained mountain pine beetle activity from 1972 to 1975. They concluded that the 1972-75 to 75 beetle outbreak was directly correlated with the burn pattern. The data suggests that the pine beetle activity in the 1970s enlarged the likelihood of the fires in 1988 by 11%. The growth in pine beetle activity created a large impact of infested trees in Yellowstone. Many insects are able to live in ecological niches due to their symbiotic relationship with other organisms. The mountain pine beetle occupies ecological niches in the bark of ponderosa and other pine trees. Specific species that have symbiotic relationships, such as the mountain pine beetle and pine trees, contain genetic structures consistent with their host tree. The genetic structure of beetles varies depending on the environment and landscape that they inhabit. Pine beetles have evolved over millions of years to fit the harsh conditions of the environment they occupy. For example, the pine beetle's digestive system in the abdomen of the beetle has evolved to create more metabolites and digestive enzymes, enabling them to break down fibers in the bark. Similar to humans, pine beetles have an alimentary canal in which food travels from their mouth to the rectum. The cytochrome P450, glutathione S-transferase, and plant cell wall degrading enzymes are all enzymes in the digestive system crucial to the mountain pine beetle's survival. The tough pine tree bark is broken down by these enzymes, allowing the pine beetle to extract and absorb nutrients from them. Another evolutionary adaptation is the fabrication of new chemicals to ward off enemies and competition. Without these evolutionary adaptations, pine beetles wouldn't be able to digest and absorb nutrients from the bark they eat off pine trees. Trees contain monoterpenes, also known as sap, which is toxic to animals and is used to protect itself from predators. The female mountain beetles metabolize pine trees by detoxifying the sap. The beetle uses hydroxylation, which adds a hydroxyl group by replacing a hydrogen atom. The hydroxylation occurs on the allylic methyl groups inside the sap, which detoxifies it. This detoxifying process attracts male pine beetles, causing for more beetles to come to the tree and attack. The attraction of the male pine beetles is due to the release of pheromones by the female beetles. The pheromones are chemical substances released and produced into the environment by animals. The chemical disrupts behavior of other beetles to get rid of competition, orders other pine beetles to attack different trees, and marks these trees for their own territory. After the sap is detoxified, the beetles are then able to inhabit the trees by releasing the blue stain fungus into the layers of the tree. Blue stain fungus prevents the tree from producing sap, which would otherwise kill the beetle. The fungus also blocks the transportation of water and nutrients, which starves the tree. The fungus's metabolizing enzymes protect the beetle from the lethal chemicals the tree secretes. After the tree has been infected by the beetles, there are pitch tubes left on the outside of the bark, marking where the beetles have entered. The two main symbiotic relationships are between the beetles and the pine trees and the beetles and the blue stain fungus. 
The beetles and pine trees have a parasitic relationship because the beetles are gaining nutrients and a habitat to lay their eggs, while the pine trees are drained of resources. Another symbiotic relationship is between the blue stain fungus and the mountain beetles. The fungus is carried into the tree on a specialized chamber on the beetle's back. Then, the fungus colonizes the inside of the tree and prevents the tree from producing sap that would otherwise kill the beetle. The food chain of the mountain pine beetles starts with the primary producers, the ponderosa and limber trees. The beetles are the primary consumer because they eat the trees, and the woodpeckers are the secondary consumers because they eat the pine beetles. If the pine beetles weren't as aggressive in killing as many trees, then not as many pine trees would be dying. If not as many pine trees were dying, then there could be an increase in other animals that eat them, such as the pine butterfly or the silver-spotted tiger moth, since their food source is growing. This increase in primary consumers could also lead to more pine trees dying. On the other hand, less pine beetles could allow the pine trees to thrive and restore a balance to the ecosystem that was disrupted by the pine beetle epidemic. Natural selection, in which organisms that are more fit to survive produce more offspring, is shown in how the pine beetles reproduce. Female beetles begin by constructing vertical straight egg galleries underneath the bark of pine trees. Females then lay small eggs which normally hatch during the summer or early fall. Once hatched, the pine beetles become larvae, which are legless and white, with brown heads. Larvae remain in this stage for about 10 months before building oval cells, which transforms them into pupa. By July, most pupa are transformed into adults. By 2020, pine beetles will have released over 270 megatons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere in Canadian forests. Due to the loss in trees and infestation of the beetles, the trees are dying and are not able to take in the carbon dioxide and convert it into oxygen through cellular respiration in the chloroplast of the leaves, thus impacting the carbon cycle by enabling more carbon dioxide to collect in the atmosphere. More carbon dioxide results in global warming which allows the pine beetles to live longer throughout the year and grow as a population. Mountain pine beetles have a large effect in North America. They have destroyed many acres of forest across the continent and continue to do so due to the fact that they have adapted well to the environment and the defenses of the trees. The current pine beetle epidemic is harming many different organisms and is impacting other cycles. Many national parks are implementing new techniques to decrease the amount of deforestation, such as spraying carbaryl, a chemical insecticide to protect trees. Unfortunately, there is not an efficient and effective way to prevent the outbreak of pine beetles, but with proper education and meaningful action, humans can decrease the rate that trees are dying from the mountain pine beetle.